Hi, I'm Jordan Wilson with Caster Headquarters, and today we're going to talk about spring-loaded gate casters. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you my personal gate that I just finished building with my father-in-law, and it was my first time building a fence. And we did decide to install our medium-duty gate caster, which is this setup right here. This is a four by inch and a quarter solid polyurethane will, and then I did use uh, the medium duty gate caster, which has a spring deflection rate of about 125 pounds uh, per caster. Now, just because this caster has a spring deflection rate of 125 pounds does not mean that this caster can't hold more capacity. All that means is after 125 pounds, the spring is no longer going to help support that shock and vibration. Now, this caster right here, this is a four by inch and a quarter solid polyurethane will, uh, which is great for outdoors. Um, it can hold 350 pounds per caster or per will. Now, most gates aren't going to weigh more than 125 pounds or most single uh, walkthrough doors, which is what I use this for. Um, and so 125 pound spring deflection rate was perfect for my gate. Now, if you have a larger gate, like let's say an eight or 12 foot um, double gate or something that's a lot heavier duty, we do have a size up uh, that's larger than this that has a 700 pound spring deflection rate. I will post all my product links in the description as well. Now, like I said, this one is a very affordable um, and very high quality caster and it does have five bolt holes right here. I simply use the four here and I just use wood lag screws. Now, obviously, um, I've seen a lot of other videos online and people will decide to use uh, actual bolts with nylon lock nuts or just regular lock nuts which is a really good idea if you want to have that added support and peace of mind. I probably will be switching my regular wood screws out um, with some actual uh, bolts and nuts in the future, but for right now, uh, it's holding up really well. And as you can see in this video, it's very easy to turn. Now, I chose this solid poly wheel because it's going to last a little bit longer than the hard rubber, in my opinion. Um, it's a very hard durometer wheel. Um, and for where I was using it, I am actually using it on the grass. And as you can tell, we've had quite a bit of rain recently. And so the soil uh, is a lot softer, but it's still holding the gate up just fine. And it's giving it great support, which keeps it from sagging. And it's still really easy to roll. As you can see, as you open the gate, the caster is gonna swivel very easily. It's gonna swivel back around um, and it's very easy to open and close. And also, it's completely silent. So you're not even gonna hear this gate caster. Um, and that is because we use very high quality uh, casters. There are actually raceway sills on here. And what that does, these are located right here. Uh, and this keeps dust and debris and basically anything dirt that's outside out of the ball bearings in this caster. And so it allows you to swivel and it a lot easier and it gives it a lot longer lifespan. Um, and this whole thing is actually zinc plated. And so what that is, it's, you know, you use your standard still when you manufacture this, and then we do a plating of zinc. Uh, what that does, is that adds extra corrosion and rust resistance. And so this is great for being outdoors. You're not gonna have to worry about it rusting like a lot of the other cheaper gate casters on the market uh, tend to do. If you have a very light um, gate, it's not too heavy, and it's just like a single person and the materials aren't, aren't that heavy, then we have a more affordable version, which is a very light duty gate caster, which just has two holes. Um, this one I probably would use maybe uh, some, a nut and bolt uh, instead of wood screws, but still you can use wood lag screws and just kind of keep up with it and check it frequently um, to see if it's coming loose. But um, a bolt and nut or lock nut is going to be a lot better option uh, than just simply screwing this in um, with a washer. But again, I screwed mine in to my fence and I've had it for months and it's not loose at all and it works perfectly fine and it's used about three times a day, three to four times a day. If you go with this one, like I said, you're gonna have about 75 to 100 pounds of spring deflection rate. Um, and then this one, and then this one right here, you're going to have about 100 to 125 pounds spring deflection rate. And then if you go with our heavier duty one, uh, you're gonna have about 700 pounds of spring deflection rate. Now the wheel materials that we offer on our light to medium duty, we offer three different types of wheel materials. Um, we offer the solid poly wheel that you saw, and this is a one piece solid poly, so you don't have to worry about any type of delamination, because this is a one solid piece. Same with the hard rubber. This is a one piece hard rubber wheel, and so you're not gonna have to worry about any delamination on that as well. And then we have our thermoplastic rubber material. Now this is a little bit softer tread. Um, I probably would not use this um, if it's on softer grounds outside. I would probably recommend this on um, 
let's say if you have like gravel or rocks or if you have something that's kind of bumpy or concrete, uh, this is a little bit softer and so it's gonna roll and glide over those debris and the rubble or rocks, gravel, whatever it is, a lot easier than a hard durometer will. So if you wanna add a little bit more protection um, against vibrations and shock, then a thermoplastic rubber is a lot better because it's a softer wheel material and it's also resistant to water, wash down chemicals. And so if it rains or anything, you don't have to worry about this material degrading over time. This is gonna hold up very well to a lot of the outdoor environments. Now, when I saw this gate on my house, this was my first time building a fence. Of course, I had the help of my father-in-law who's very familiar with how to build a fence. So what we did is we actually built, we actually used something called like build a gate. Um, and what that was, it's basically like a metal frame that extends to whatever length your fence is up to like six feet long, I think, or your gate. And it gives you basically the, the top, the side and the bottom. And then it actually gives you the cross support as well. But over time, any type of gate, um, whether you leave it closed and latched at all times, which is a lot better to do, um, it's still going to sag over time. Um, and so that's where the gate caster comes in handy, is your, it's always gonna give you that added support. I mean, your, your one side of your gate is always going to be held up by this gate caster. Um, and this is going to be just a fantastic option and upgrade to any fence or any gate. Now in a couple months, um, I've already started, we're building a, another gate on the other side of my house. And this is gonna be a double opening gate, and we're gonna use our heavy duty gate casters for each side of the gate. Or each gate and this one's going to be about a I think an eight foot opening I think it's gonna be about an eight foot wide gate and it's going to require these heavier duty spring loaded casters and I will make videos um, as we do the construction on that part I actually should have that front side with the gates done um, within the next month or two we've already started uh, drilling holes we have our auger the only problem where I live is it's solid rock bed under the soil and so it's very hard even with an auger to, to drill your post holes so it's, it's it's quite a bit of work it takes a lot longer me doing it uh, myself versus hiring somebody uh, especially with the type of soil that we have which is mainly uh, limestone on like right under the ground maybe a few inches under the ground it's just solid beds of limestone and so it's pretty difficult to actually drill with my auger I bought you can go uh, a little over 24 inches down, though a little over two feet down, pretty easily, just straight down if there's no rocks. My problem is it's solid rock bed. With any auger, especially the electric one, which is a fantastic auger, it's just we have to break that rock. Every time we hit rock, I have to get uh, basically a big giant like railroad screw and sledgehammer, and we have to just slam this screw, break the concrete up, uh, then we'll dig it out, and we'll auger again a couple more inches, hit rock again, and we just keep doing that all the way down. So I think uh, this past weekend, on Sunday, we did four holes, four holes, and just to do four post holes, it took us like six or seven hours. Like it was insane. Now, I could go rent a really heavy duty gas powered auger uh, from Home Depot that might do a better job than what I was using, but like I said, I've already purchased this electric auger and it's from Amazon. It was a great deal and it really does do a really good job if you don't have tons of rock under the soil like I do. But regardless, it still saves me a lot of money to build a fence on my own and it gives me a little bit of experience, especially with these gate casters where I can kind of show you what I did and I'm, I am in no way, uh, shape or form, an expert on building a fence or a gate. And this was my first time installing a gate caster. Now I sell these gate casters. I know the specifications, I know what they're used for. I know the ro rotating space and, the sp and technical specifications and can recommend a certain wheel material for the certain type of ground that you have. But when it comes to installing this, it was my first time. So I'm sure there's gonna be some comments in here, maybe with some good positive advice on how I should uh, mount it next time. Rotating space on mine was, <sighs> I think it was like three and a quarter. It was a little over three inches of rotating space. And so when I first mounted this to the gate and I went to rotate the caster, the wheel was hitting the back side of the fence. And so what I had to do, I actually had to add two extra squares, uh, pieces of two by four uh, to extend um, where I would mount this. Um, so I had to I had to basically extend this off of the gate a little bit. And once I did that, I mean, it works perfect. And once you added the stain, oh, you know, once I stained the fence and everything, you can't even tell. 
if you do have a gate that's higher off the ground, you can just mount this kind of like to the corner of the gate, and this is gonna be able to swivel under the gate. But since mine is a privacy fence, I wanted it as low as possible, and you do have to kind of keep in mind there is a rotating space or that swivel radius, and so when you mount this, just make sure that you pay attention to that. When you do install this, like I said, you're gonna to need to add something, maybe a two, an extra two by four or something, uh, depending on how your gate is and the setup of it to basically extend this out a little bit. That way when the wheel rotates, it doesn't touch the fence. Other than that, our casters are fantastic. Ours are a lot heavier duty than the ones that you'll see at your hardware stores. There's a lot better uh, basically quality uh, manufacturing that we make sure we provide uh, within every single gate caster uh, before we sell to the public. And so not only is our caster a actually like an institutional industrial caster, which means it has a double ball raceway, it has sealed ball bearings, um, it's zinc plated. I mean, this is a very high quality caster uh, combined with this real thick, it's probably over a quarter inch thick steel. And then you have a very heavy duty spring with five different mounting holes. So this one will probably fit, I, I'm assuming about a half inch bolt and these are five sixteenths holes. So you would need some five sixteenths screws or bolts if you wanna mount these. Like I said, I just use uh, some wood screws and it worked perfect uh, anyways for now, but I probably will change those out to some bolts with some lock nuts in the future. I know this was a short video. It doesn't actually show me installing the gate casters, but it does show you the gate casters on my fence and it shows you as I open and close the gate and swivel this caster around that these are a very good quality caster. These are very quiet and they are going to prevent your gate from sagging and it's going to be very easy to open and close your gate after these are installed. So this is a very inexpensive, yet very good upgrade for just about any gate. It's gonna save you a lot of money um, from wear and tear over time. Gate casters are fantastic to any gate, like I said, whether it's pre-existing or whether it's new, because it just fixes a lot of headaches and it's kind of like preventative maintenance. It's gonna prevent your gate from sagging over time. It's gonna allow you to consistently open and close your gate very easily. And like I said, the added support is gonna save you time and money because you're not gonna to have to make those expensive repairs or those repairs that just cost you time uh, that's really unnecessary if you were to install a gate caster uh, to a fence, whether it's a pre-existing gate and it hasn't sagged yet, or it's a gate that's already uh, having some issues with it sagging, this is gonna level it back out. Um, so it's a really good upgrade for just about any fence or any gate. So if this video helped, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you have any questions or any comments or critique, please comment below. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and we're gonna continue to release more videos, maybe once a week uh, of different applications out there in the caster industry. So thanks for watching.